croeso i Bysgota Cymru. Welcome to Fishing in Wales. Hi, join us today from the banks of the Wye, somewhere between Simmons Yacht and Monmouth. Um, it's currently about 24 degrees, so we're taking refuge in the shade and we're going to try and go and spade a few barbel if they're uh, taking our hook baits. And fingers crossed we'll have some luck. Right, so we just uh, just arrived at the beat now. Uh, we've had a walk along it and we decided to fish the head of the beat. There's a, there's a shallow run above us, it's dropping down in a nice pool. It's full of features, stream of weed, and there's a bit of variation in depth there, and it looks like a fish holding feature. So we're going to start off here. Obviously, we've got the shallows above us, it's dropping down, it's bringing the oxygen down. It is a good holding area for the barbel. So hopefully, we'll present a few baits out, you know, and uh, manage to get a bend in a rod. But we're just going to start off with simple feeder tactics, consisting of two ounce feeders, three and a half foot length, uh, three and a half foot hook lengths, and um, have a pair of hook baits, and see where we go from there. You notice I've got some uh, nice compact kit with me today, and that's one thing when obviously tagging fish on the river, you need to be quite mobile at times. We're lucky today that fish are a, a nice big feature, so we're not putting all our eggs in one basket, but it's a really obvious place to fish. No other days you might not have the luxury of that, you might need to go and find them. So being nice and compact and mobile is really, really, is, well, it's pretty essential if I'm honest. But in here we've got a couple of 12 foot rods, as you can see it's only a 4 foot bag, they packed out, they're slightly telescopic and they're super light. That's a mix we're going to go with today, nothing complicated, we've got a couple of larger pellets, a couple of bits of broken boilie and a key ingredient, some little tiny micro pellets, I'll just dampen them up and they'll just bind together and obviously plug the feeder, but that's all you're looking for, basically when your feeder empties, it's a small mix of that over the bottom, there's some smaller particles in there, some larger ones, and that's just to keep the barbel grubbing about in the swim for a bit longer, obviously the smaller fish will come in, they'll kick these little pellets up, and they'll start feeding, create a cloud in the bottom, and that's what we're trying to do is create a feeding scenario, a situation where the barbel are coming in, becoming competitive, losing their, their weariness, and they're uh, happily taking our hook baits. But yeah, simple stuff, nothing over complicated, but certainly super effective. Just when you're mixing this up, I always mix it a little bit wetter, because what you'll find is that when the pellet expands, it sucks the moisture in, and it will become dry. So don't be afraid to make sure it's nice and wet. And like I said, leave this now. While you're setting your tackle up, those pellets will suck that moisture in. It looks a bit wet now at the moment, but by the time you've got the kit together, with the temperatures, that should be just about right. And obviously, if it does dry out, just have a little scoop of water, pop it on, and mix it in. I'm not overly concerned about that being sloppy, like I said, they'll expand, that moisture will be sucked up and they'll soon be tidy for plugging the feeder. But yeah, super, super, super duper simple, but again, nice and effective. So we're going to start off with a hook length around two and a half to three foot inches in length. If I was fishing a pressured beat, I'd probably double that, just so obviously the hook baits kicked away from the feeder and the barbel don't spook off the feeder. But because we're on a stretch today, it doesn't see too much pressure using a short hook length in the hope that the barbel are going to home straighten the feeder. As you can see now, the pellet's taken all, all that additional water that we could see earlier on and compress that in. Not too tight, but tight enough that when it hits the surface of the river, it's not going to disperse and it's going to stay until it hits the bed. That's what you want. So you basically you want to just compact it down between your thumb and your forefinger, just tight enough so it holds. You know, that's not going to come out on the cast and when it hits the surface, it's going to keep its shape and travel down to the bottom and then release. So we're just using a, a simple Corum bolt and run kit. All it consists of is our little rubber grommet there, which fits inside their uh, the running ring. Obviously, you've got a grommet the other side, which houses the swivel. It's got a quick link on the end. All that does is secures the running ring and creates a bolt rig. But obviously, if you do snag up and you get uh, tangled, that pulls free and the fish is just left carrying the hook length. Similar sort of principle to a uh, to a cart bolt bolt kit, but uh, device for the river angler. Right, here we settled into a swim now. The rods are set up everything's ready and that's one thing which is worth men mentioning make sure that obviously after you've cast your drag is set loose enough because obviously the the bar will take is quite savage and if you haven't got that clutch set correctly you know when it's tight 
that rod's gonna go for, into the river and there's only one way to get it and that's either go in and get it or you're gonna lose it completely and if you lose a rod in the winter you've got very very little chance of getting it back so that's one thing just be sure you are using bait runners or if you're using a, a reel with a front drag make sure it's slackened off enough to allow line on the take otherwise you're gonna lose a rod and the other thing to be mindful of is just make sure you've got your, your mat ready make sure it's wet yeah, your landing nets in place because obviously you can cast sometimes you can cast and then instantaneously you'll have a take and if you're not prepared for it you're going to get caught out so just be ready and be mindful make sure you've got everything to hands and everything's in place ready to go Uh, we're fishing a section of the Welsh wide this, uh, today. It's an absolutely beautiful bit of river. It contains lots of different species of fish. You've got, obviously, you've got the salmon that it's renowned for. The other thing it's really renowned for is its barb or barb population. In recent years, it's starting to get bigger, up to a, up to a record size of 14, 12, which is an absolutely massive fish for this, for this river in particular. But they do seem to be getting bigger year on year, which is another good sign. But the river's absolutely full of life. It's teeming with frying and margins. The weed growth has come back this year as well, which is really promising. And again, it's another positive side for the future. And the other thing we've noticed up along the river this, for the last couple of seasons is the, the year groups of barbel, the different year classes. So you catch them between pound and a half right way through to all the double figures. So that again, with all the negativity you have here lately, with all the, all the pollution going into the river and the algae blooms, there's a little bit of light there in the fact that the barbel are obviously Re repopulating the river because we're catching up with so many different year classes which is a really really good sign now when it comes to forms of access for the river you've got various different options and also if you if you are on a club ticket you've got Newport Angling Association you've got Caffili um, they, own a, a, they have a bit on the bottom which is available after the 17th of October um, you've got Monmouth Angling and then you've got the likes of the YNS Foundation and obviously Adam Fisher with his Angling Dreams now all of these sections can offer you some prolific sport of the day but it's just need to get your timings right and pick your conditions to suit obviously what you're going to uh, target at that time so if you've got uh, bright conditions like we got today just turn up in the evening and rather than wasting a whole day you know with the, the sun's up you have a high pressure you know you can sit there bike this again annoyed by canoers just use a bit of common sense and come up a bit later you know fish into evening if the if the club stretch you're on allows that or if the one of the YNS Foundation beats allows that, they do that. So you're much, much better off. As you could probably tell by the background there, we've had to make a change. Did have any joy after about an hour in the first swim. And uh, this time year, it's definitely a good idea to, to leapfrog down a river, spend an hour, 45 minutes in each swim. If you're not getting any indications, rather than flogging it to death of the feeder, just keep on dropping down river, exploring features, and hopefully, eventually then you'll drop onto the fish. But this time year, when the sun is out, it's certainly worth being mobile, just to uh, increase your chances. So, we just dropped that back into the first swim we started in. Um, I applied a bit of bait by the bopper, Give it about an hour, um, come back, reposition the rods. Five minutes later, it's absolutely hammered off. It feels like we've got a lovely white barbel on the end here. It's put a cracking bend in this 1.75. Uh, little extend barbel rod from Cora. Lovely bit of kit. Years. Now we've caught the, obviously we've spent the time catching the barbel. Now obviously we need to take that time to look after it. With the summer and the, the dissolved levels of oxygen in the water being low, just make sure you can rest them up with a good bit of depth, a bit of flow. Make sure they're fully fit, obviously before you t uh, return them. I, I have actually been in the river before now to go and re rescue a barbel which hasn't been rested properly. Obviously, as mentioned all the time, we do go on about it, but it is essential. Obviously now this fish has had a good rest, but again, it's a prime example of a white barbel. Not massive, don't get me wrong, big enough to, uh, to put a bend in a rod. And certainly, certainly appreciate it on a nice warm day like today. And off she goes. Oh, mate.
Right there, uh, the lights just starting to fade. We're approaching uh, the early evening and uh, the rod's absolutely hammered off. A lovely account for itself. Give you one last uh, little glance before we slip him back now. Obviously he's been rest as well. So that, that pretty much concludes another uh, epic session on the Y. It's a fantastic place. I hope this offers you some inspiration and you come up and try it for yourself. But we've got lots of brilliant fishing in Wales. And if you want to find out any information, just head on over to the Fishing in Wales website. There's a, a multitude of uh, venues whole host of different disciplines and it's something to cater for everyone but yeah hopefully i'll see you soon discover fishing in wales